Hey guys, Rexasaur here, and welcome to the next episode of Total War Warhammer Lore, where in this episode we will be looking at what is chaos. Now, that is a very broad term for everyone who knows uh, about Warhammer. Saying what is chaos is impossible to answer. Um, what I'm going to do is a very, very brief summary of what chaos represents, what it is, and every single faction that uh, embodies chaos, because there are several. Um, so if we look at the map, chaos happens in the north and south of the map, and throughout history in the old world, chaos have been an invasion force. They've been coming from the north and invading downwards, uh, basically wrecking chaos, believe it or not, um, throughout the, the lands. And uh, one of the main reasons why the um, forces of order, so the elves, the dwarves, the men, have been united together, and even sometimes united with their enemies, uh, was to fight against chaos because chaos is such a you know a, a anti force such an evil force within itself so before we talk really about all the units and all the different factions something you need to know about chaos is the four gods of chaos there are several more but there are four main ones which are represented in the game these four are corn nurgle slanesh and Szinch. Corn is the god is the blood god, god of blood, god of killing, god of war, god of whatever you want it. Um, he basically his warriors shout blood for the blood god just to tell you just how bloody he is. He sits on a skull throne, um, you know, it, like everything about him is to do with bloodthirstiness and frenzy in battle. Nurgle is the god of the plague. He's called the All Father. Um, he is, out of all the Chaos Gods, he is probably the one who wants the least destruction, kind of. He's basically alive to make the perfect disease, the perfect plague. He's out there to destroy everything in the most plaguey way, like without actually using force, but, you know, spreading poisons and diseases, just to see the reaction. He's not out there to, you know wreck whole lands in the name of his name he's out there to find the perfect plague to to wreck ruin and see what happens he's kind of like a, a mad scientist kind of person uh he's the green one so like obviously corn is the red one he's the green one slanesh is the prince of pleasure prince of darkness he's out there he's a sadistic kind of sexual and and like horror and all about pain becoming pleasure kind of thing um he's like he's the youngest of the four gods and he's also probably one of the most powerful uh, in the law at the moment um in like he's he's the purple one and he's all about this like sexual boundaries between pleasure and pain it's it's quite horrible when you like think into it but that's basically what Sanesh represents and all his units are like incredibly fast and nimble and take pleasure in dealing pain and having pain dealt to them it's blah, <laughs> really weird and finally Tazinch now Tazinch is the blue one he's all about knowledge and the ancient arts and the arcane arts all about magic and the uh, manipulation of the magical winds towards his uh, desires and all and that was one of the greater demons of Tazinch was the ones that we saw in the Warhammer, in the Total War Warhammer trailer. And that is like one thing that's really important is the fact that it's Tazinch who's been shown not Korn, not Sanesh, not um, Nurgle. It's Tazinch, which is kind of a strange one because of like Tazinch is probably the one that's been the least represented in all of the Total War in all the Warhammer games that there's ever been. Um, when I talk about this, I talk about the Dawn of War games, uh, which represented it because um, the Gods of Chaos actually spread throughout both Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer Science Fiction, so Warhammer 40,000. Okay, so that's the four gods. That is something that you just need to get into your head. Next, I want to talk to you about Arcanon, the Ever Chosen. Now, Arcanon is the most badass motherfucker out there. He is um, prophesied. To lead the end of times. So when the end times come, he will descend with the biggest horde of chaos that the old world has ever seen. And he will decimate everything and he is the one destined to lead this end times. The reason why he's so like powerful is because he has the blessing of all four gods. He has the blessing of all of them, so he's like incredibly bloodthirsty. He has the blessing of Slanesh, so he's incredibly fast. To Zinch, so he's like incredibly... Um, 
knowledgeable and he can think of many art tactics. He's very versatile in magic. And, fi uh, and finally, um, Slanesh, so he's incredibly fast. Or was it Nurgle? Finally, Nurgle, so he's incredibly resilient to damage and other stuff like that. So that is why he's like ultimate almighty and powerful. And he's just badass as hell. Um, so that's our canon. And he embodies basically chaos. However, most of the time, the Chaos factions actually split between the gods. So you have some that worship Korn, some that worship Sanesh, and etc, etc. So we're going to talk about the four, like, factions, actually the five factions I've put down, and um, the units that they might have. I'm not going to talk a great deal about them, because there are so, so many. There are basically four different armies in the, uh, in, on the tabletop, and it would be impossible for me to talk about them all. So I'm only going to talk about a few, and, like, they're, what they're, you know, general troop composites and stuff like that so firstly we have the warriors of chaos warriors of chaos are incredibly strong men with incredibly brutal armor uh, they they look fucking badass they are really badass and they basically all have one deity so usually shown by their armor so if they wear red armor it'll probably be corn green nurgle etc etc now they are basically what makes the core of a elite I mean, usually in an army, you would not see a lot of warriors on the tabletop because they are incredibly strong, and uh, but there aren't that many. You have to be, like, incredibly strong to become a, a warrior because it's a, it's a place that's really sought out within the structure of the Chaos Wastes. Next, we have the Marauders. Now, Marauders are basically those who aren't warriors yet. They're, they're people, they're, they're basically barbarian men that have been cast out from the empire or Kier cell or whatever you know from the surrounding move to the chaos waste they kind of worship the chaos gods some of them don't worship them fully yet so they haven't embraced chaos so they're just marauders they're just out there to, to pillage to burn you know your your kind of hordic kind of faction who goes around burning pillaging uh raping the women that general stuff and uh, they will make up the bulk of a usual chaos army well, you'll have, say, you'll have three units of Marauders for one unit of Chaos Warriors, for example. Next, we have what's called the Beastmen. Now, the Beastmen don't actually live in the north. They live in uh, the woods of Bretonia, I'm, I believe. I think they do, anyway. I'm pretty sure. Um, and um, basically, they are men who have been turned into beasts by Chaos. And they embody chaos in a way that they wreck you know it's a, it's a mix of two races of beast and man hence why they're called beast men believe it or not and they wreck you know chaos everywhere and they're the main main enemy of uh bretonia and the wood elves who live there so that's that's beast men pretty much there's not much else to talk about them um next you have chaos dwarves who are basically dwarves who worship chaos they're pretty awesome. They really like guns. They have some really nice f uh, fire uh, mechanics, kind of like massive fire cannons and cannons that spurt out massive fireballs kind of thing. It's pretty awesome. Um, and I do want them to be implemented into the game somehow. I know a lot of people do because Chaos Dwarfs are amazing. And then finally you have Chaos Demons. Now Chaos Demons are uh, basically elements of the gods that live within the realm of, the, of, of Chaos which is called uh, the the warp, but I don't know if it's still called that in fantasy, actually. But anyway, the demons come from where the chaos lives, and then they've moved into the, the material world, where if they die, they are banished back into the chaos realm and have to spend years and years rebuilding. And they are incredibly powerful. Um, they are pure embodiment of, of magical power, and can just wreck everything they come across. I mean, for example, the, the greater demon is going to be have part of the knowledge of Tzinch himself, and is just going to be blasting everything, you know, as if it was nothing, kind of. So that is a brief overview of Chaos, and I do apologize that I haven't gone into a massive detail of each of the units and each of the factions, but it's because I, re I kind of wanted just to give an overview of what Chaos is, because it would take a, a long time for me to get go into every faction uh, but i will do it i will do it later but i kind of just wanted to give you an overview of what the chaos is the gods because that's really important and then after that i will go into more detail um but yeah anyway thank you very much for watching please like comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already and i will be seeing you next time